I co-wrote the movie with my brother Tony. And my twin brother, John, is the editor on the movie. Johnny and Tony have worked before. Johnny was the editor on Michael Clayton, and he was also the editor of Duplicity. So Johnny and Tony have worked together on several films. This is the first film that Tony and I worked on that, as writers, that it got made. We started, when we first started out, we actually did start as a team. And we realized they didn't give you two paychecks for working together. So, so we sort of took our separate careers. and. Uh, we collaborate over the phone and we share ideas, so it was a sort of a natural fit when this came around to sort of jump into it. We trust each other. We we're on the same wavelength in terms of, in terms of our ideas. We, we knew going into it that a good idea was always going to prevail. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's, film is a collaborative process in and of itself. But in this case, it was particularly collaborative because uh, Tony really did want to surround himself with people that, that he felt comfortable with. But when you have your computer in front of you now, I am, on anything I'm working on, I'm researching ten, f three times an hour, five times an hour. I'm born particularly. There's national security, uh, minutia, there's, there's sort of vague terrorist sort of activities that he's doing. Uh, on an interesting side note, Tony and I both probably had a couple of hundred hits on, online where we're looking up stuff. How do you fake a United States passport? How do you <laughs> slip past Homeland Security? And you're always imagining who is out there in the ether watching it. Well, come, come to pass, last week, my wife and I applied to go through the, the fast lane through the security. She got in and I didn't. Nice. So now I'm starting to wonder who, who, whose radar I'm on. When Matt Damon and, and Paul Greengrass stepped back from it and the studio wanted to proceed, they, they, they approached a number of people and, and, and didn't get, I guess, the result they wanted. And they approached Tony. And Tony came up with a very specific take very early on. And that was that he was going to you know, feather the end of Ultimatum with this film. That was his core concept that was not going to change. It was never discussed that Matt Damon's character was going to be a part of it. Uh, I think everybody understood that that was really, this was not the time to sort of like try a new direction and, and bring him in. I don't, I don't think anybody really thought of it that way. Uh, but the core concept of having it overlap with Ultimatum was there from beginning, as was, as was Aaron Cross's journey. Those were the two things that I think Tony had started with that we built off of. We knew that we knew that 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 it was effective to have Matt's character in the background. We didn't want it to become uh, a crass sort of like point. Oh, let's not forget that this is going on, and this was like something that really had to be tracked. Th there were times during the writing, as we were rewriting, that we a couple times the studio and, uh, was was wondering, do we want more or less? It was it was a topic that was discussed. I think we probably left in the outline two or three different places that we could have put Matt sort of in the background that we decided not to because we didn't want to sort of push that sort of mixing board element too far. You're, the Olympics are on right now. And you see all the testing that's going on for anything that's genetically enhanced, anything that could push you farther. Well, you know, the bottom line is there's no, there's no drug testing in war. And, and, and the reality is, is when you really start to look on this and you go online within five or ten minutes, there's, there's just many, many, many uh, hits where you're reading about the research that's being done to try to enhance the human body, both for war and for national intelligence, whether it's being able to go without sleep, whether it's a stronger you know, physical presence, whether it's uh, mental acuity that you don't have. Um, it's a big, bad world out there, and we spend a ton of money trying to get on top of it. Well, it's, it's an entirely different character in the sense that, that Jason Bourne is a guy who's been gone through a rather traumatic sort of quote unquote brainwashing experience, turned into an assassin, obviously has lost his memory, is now trying to find out one who he is and two, you know, where where it where it came from, where it all started. So he's a guy who's searching for an identity, literally. Aaron Cross is a guy who's fully cognizant of where he comes from. So so we were never trying to differentiate, it was a natural differentiation. And and if Aaron Cross is now that you've seen the film, if Aaron Cross's dilemma could be sort of summed up, I would sum it up in He's a guy who's managed to taste something, who's managed to experience both physically and particularly mentally an, ex an existence that he did not have before. And it's now in threat of being taken away from him. And it's the equivalent of if, if, if any one of you or I were in jeopardy of having our very identities, our personas, what we understand to be existence, if that could be taken away from us at, at this moment, how far would we go to try to keep that alive? So, so I would say the defining quality or the defining difference between them is that Aaron Cross really has free will. And he's tasted something that's almost a little bit godlike and wants to keep that intact.